Hare Krishna. Welcome back to our discussion on positive thinking. We are discussing about the factors that shape our willpower. Until now we have discussed the five factors, our genes, our upbringing, our association, our free will and God's grace. Now we will discuss about how we can boost our free will by connecting it with God's grace. So <clears throat> when we use our free will consistently and purposefully, it is what we refer to as willpower. Now <clears throat> the Upanishads use a very intriguing and comprehensive metaphor to depict our inner dynamics which undergird our willpower. So in this metaphor, which is often called as a chariot body metaphor, the body is compared to a chariot, the horses are compared to the senses, the reins are compared to the mind, the chariot is compared to the intelligence, the passenger is the soul. So now the ideal setup is that the passenger tells the charioteer where I want to go and accordingly the charioteer directs the horses using the reins. But similarly, if we are spiritually aware, if we are spiritually purposeful, then we know what are the values and values and goals of our life and accordingly we direct our body-mind mechanism. But if the horses are wild, and if the passenger is bewildered, so the passenger is drunk or passenger is uh, deluded, passenger is not even aware where I am going, the horses may pull the uh, chariot here and there as per their own wills. So similarly, if we are not spiritually conscious and if we are, uh, if our senses are wild, then the senses will push us, will push and pull us here and there. So the intelligence is the charioteer. And the intelligence as the charioteer, the is, uh, uh, the, the, is the one who has the responsibility to control the horses. So similarly, our intelligence needs to be very strong by which we can uh, control the senses and we can be purposeful in achieving whatever goals we want to achieve in our life. So now what is it that determines our intelligence? Nowadays we uh, for the last century or so we have had IQ tests which tell uh, our IQ score and people with high IQ are considered to be people who are very intelligent. Yes, IQ is one parameter of intelligence, but it is not the full determiner of intelligence. It's all time and time again, it has been seen that even people with high IQs fail in life. They don't develop proper relationships. They may be organized in their thinking, but they're not very organized in their living. And in that way, they because they can't develop relationships, because they can't uh, organize, man manage themselves properly, manage their others properly, despite their capacity for information processing, which is essentially what is measured by IQ, they don't succeed in life. So now researchers have talked about EQ, which is the capacity to be emotionally sensitive, emotional quotient, and to understand group dynamics, people sensitive, people's emotional uh, emotional sensitivities and to um, shape one's behavior accordingly and then some researchers have also talked about SQ spiritual quotient which talks about how we need to be uh, have an overall sense of purpose in our life and we need to uh, make decisions in a harmony with the overall purpose of our life so IQ, EQ uh, are fine, but un unless there is a high SQ by which we can uh, integrate the various aspects of our uh, life under a overall purposeful rubric, without that, we will not get life satisfaction. So the Bhagavad Gita offers us a vision of intelligence, which is 
uh, which is quite comprehensive. Intelligence is not just the information processing cap capacity, it comprises of discrimination and determination. Now, nowadays the word discrimination has a negative connotation to it because of say caste discrimination or racist discrimination or gender discrimination. <laughs> but uh, <coughs> the word discrimination originally does not have to have any uh, any uh, any discriminatory uh, basis to uh, uh, it implicitly. It just means the capacity to understand, to, to, to differentiate between the two. So differentiation and determination. So the capacity to differentiate between <coughs> uh, differentiate between the temporary and the eternal, between the material and the spiritual, between the long term and the short term, between the impulsive and the reflective. So sometimes things which uh, which uh, which seem to be pleasant initially may be malevolent uh, in eventually. So for example, uh, <coughs> chocolates may taste good. They seem pleasant, but they may spoil the teeth, they may spoil the stomach, they may spoil uh, spoil the figure, they may have so many negative effects in the long run. So this is uh, the capacity, this can be understood by the capacity to differentiate. Uh, okay, this is short term pleasurable, but this is long term troublesome. So intelligence is not just the capacity to uh, process information, but it is also the capacity to differentiate between the beneficial and the titillating. So, between the titillating and the uplifting. When we understand this differentiation, then we can choose wisely. And scripture, God offers us, is message through scriptures. So, when we start, do Swadhyaya, so we are talking about, just as the intelligence the charioteer needs to be strong to control the horses and direct them purposefully. Similarly, our intelligence needs to be strong by which we can make healthy choices, by which we can direct our life towards purposeful goals. And that is foundational for our willpower. So, uh, the, willpower, the so willpower is based on our intelligence and our intelligence is sustained. One aspect, the capacity for differentiation is sustained by scriptural study. So scriptural study, it sharpens our discerning capacity and we can understand <coughs> what is should be done, what, it sh what should be avoided. Pravrittim cha nivrittim cha karya karye bhaya bhaye bandham moksham cha yabetti buddhi sa partha satviki. Krishna says, the right intelligence is that which differentiates between what is to be done and what is not to be done. What will be freeing, what will be binding. <clears throat> what will be beneficial, what will be harmful. This kind of capacity to differentiate is the capacity of the of the intelligence. And that can be strengthened by Swadhyaya. And then there is sadha, and then there is not just differentiation, there is also determination. Determination means the capacity to translate our vision into action. Okay, I understand that this is not good for me. Although it seems it feels good, it's not good. So after understanding this. We need to be able to stay away from this, and that is determination. This is the horses. When the horses start seeing some fruit or something like that off the road, and the horses start going away from the road, at that time, the <coughs> charioteer should also not get carried away. Oh, that looks nice. Let, let us go there. No, that's off the road. There's a ditch in between. The whole chariot will overturn. I cannot go there. So that differentiating capacity. This is the path, and this is, uh, this is off the path. That capacity the charioteer also has to have. And after that, when the horse tries to start moving in the wrong direction, the charioteer has to have the strength and the skill to pull back the horses and bring them on track. So similar, keep them on track. Similarly, determination is the capacity to transform our vision into action. So scriptural study will give us the vision and sadhana. Sadhana is practices such as meditation, which we will discuss more in our future talks later, that this connects our power with the power of God. God becomes accessible through spiritual practices. And His omnipotence enables us to, uh, to control and uh, control ourselves and transform our vision into action. They say the charioteer is weak and someone stronger comes and gives a helping hand of the charioteer, the charioteer can, uh, can, can control the horse or the charioteer himself 
practices uh, bodybuilding and develops muscles in the charioteer can control the horses. Similarly, our determination can be strengthened. And when our determination is strengthened by sadhana, then in, we can actually act positively. So our willpower can be boosted by sharpening our differentiation and strengthening our determination. How these can be done? That is through swadhyaya and sadhana. We'll discuss more about the underlying principles of connecting the human will with the divine will in our future talks. Thank you. Hare Krishna.